I'm Tony Policastro, and you're watching Acoustic Tuesday. On episode number 88, you're gonna hear a fantastic finger stylist. You're gonna learn about a guitar workshop tool that is a must have, even if you don't have a dedicated guitar workshop, and you're gonna learn the secret to never falling behind on your guitar journey again. All that and more, including a guitar review, right after this. I'm Tony Policastro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday. I am so happy you're here. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week. And the list this week starts off with an awesome guitar that came in the mail a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I just figured we'd dive right in and review the Furch OMCSR. Now, first and foremost, I will say this. I've heard it pronounced Furk, and I've heard it pronounced Furch, but I'm pretty sure my sources are now indicating that it is truly Furch. So we're gonna go with Furch. Furch guitars are made in the Czech Republic, and they were featured on a previous Acoustic Tuesday episode, and after that episode aired, Clara from Furch reached out and she said, hey, I heard that you haven't tried any of our new guitars yet. And I said, well, that is true. She's like, would you like to try one? And I said, well, I, I wouldn't be a guitar geek if I said no. So of course I said yes. And she went through all the trouble to getting one here to the States. And I am so delighted that she sent one. So I wanna thank Clara. So let's dive in to the, specifically the Furch OMC SR. First, let's kind of decode the name. So OM, that's the body shape. The C obviously stands for cutaway. And the SR indicates the tone woods that are employed in this particular guitar. We've got a Sitka spruce top and a beautiful piece of Indian rosewood back and sides. This guitar comes equipped with the LR Bags Stage Pro, Stage Pro Anthem, yeah, uh, which is a nice uh, blend between a piezo pickup as well as a microphone pickup. And the guitar itself is aesthetically gorgeous. Uh, the orange uh, part of the name indicates a series. It's kind of think of it as an aesthetic package, uh, including some tone wood stuff as well. But uh, let's just purely think of it from an aesthetic standpoint right now. What I love about this guitar is the trim, okay? So you've got maple binding used throughout and all of the wooden accents, uh, the purfling and the rosette are all paduke, which is really striking red color. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. We've got an ebony bridge. Uh, the head plate is gorgeous as well with the Furch logo in the top. We've got shallow tuners with wooden buttons, uh, an ancient three quarter tusk nut and a tusk saddle. And one of the things that is really small and I just noticed it as I sat down with this guitar today is the bridge pins are on an angle. And I think it's just one of these delicate, beautiful touches that I love. I mean, I just, I looked at that and I thought, ah, it's that fine attention to detail, the, to, to detail that I absolutely enjoy. Uh, also, there's a clear pick guard so you can enjoy all the vibrancy of that Sitka spruce top. And I'm probably sure at this point you're wondering, well, Tony, how does it sound? Uh, I think it sounds delightful. It's harmonically rich. It's a, a fairly complex tone and it's got wonderful string separation. So I'm gonna play it a little bit. And what I found after messing with the guitar over the weekend is that it really shines with alternate tuning. So I used a tuning on this particular, uh, or I'm going to be using a tuning when I'm playing right now. It's C, G, D, G, B, C. So it's like a C, add nine, major seven type tuning. And it's just a real lush sounding tuning. So I'm gonna give it a play.
just a wonderful guitar with a good long tail of sustain. And as I mentioned, I, I flat picked with it a little bit over the weekend, but where I felt this guitar truly shine was in the finger style realm, as I mentioned, particularly with open tunings. So I wanna encourage you to check out Furch Guitars, particularly the OMCSR, but uh, please visit their website and check out all the models that they offer. They're employing some really wonderful diverse tone woods, and uh, I think you'll find some of the technology that they're using is pretty impressive as well. They have the CNR neck, which is composite, I have it written down, uh, composite neck reinforcement. Essentially, the truss rod runs through a carbon channel to prevent any rattling and any kind, and more of a smooth adjustment process. And uh, in the neck heel, there's actually a, a cast alloy piece that maintains the neck angle. And what I've, uh, what I've kind of discovered on their website is that uh, they cite that this particular system will prevent 90% of the warping and twisting and things that can happen to a neck over time time under tension. So pretty cool technology and something that uh, I think you should learn more about as well. So to visit their website, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT88. That'll give you the show notes and the links, uh, particularly to Furch Guitars and everything else that I'm about to talk about. So with that being said, check out Furch Guitars. I'm going to get myself all squared away here. And uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna introduce you to the man behind the scenes, running the camera, pressing buttons, moving microphones, and growing the most elegant mustache you've ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first. Tony, thanks for the compliment on the mustache. I really uh, am admiring that. Um, I'm, I'm just, I guess, you know, part of me, I think about it often, part of me wonders what it's gonna look like as it gets longer. Yeah, I've never, I, I was thinking the same thing and I'm like, you know, I didn't go very long before and then I tried to trim it and then I messed it up and then I had to end up just taking it all off. But now I think I'm just going to let it go wild and see what happens. Really? Yeah. So we'll, we'll be able to discuss like how hard it is to eat soup and drink coffee and other things like that. Yes. I'm excited for those days. Yeah. I want to go, if I can do it, I want to go like civil war style, Whoa. you know, where it's just like, <laughs> like a mouth shield <laughs> it's like a you yeah. gotta like part it to do anything you're like <laughs> yeah. oh it's kind of gross uh, when, you, yeah, when you refer to it like that i'll just Any only eat through a straw or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh how was your weekend uh man i had a really great weekend it was it was fun all around on so many levels but let me just give you the highlight okay and say that um for the first time i actually got out with the camera and filmed you playing your last hockey night of this of the season yes and uh came with my daughter and had the camera on the on the go and it was a lot of fun it was pretty cool i was uh i was bummed we lost but you know i was thinking about it because that we lost the game prior to that too so two lo two losses in the playoffs and you're totally out and i was thinking man i had such a fun season i had to like i had to reflect i had to reflect back and and be like you know this isn't, I'm never going to win the Stanley Cup in men's league. It's just not going to happen. As much as I think I'd like it to happen, it's never going to happen. Uh, so it was just fun. And, and I was thinking, man, the team is just a, 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 just a great bunch of people that without hockey, I don't think I ever would have met. And I think you saw a little bit of a glimpse of that. Just It's just laughs from the minute you get to the rink to the minute you leave. It's pretty amazing. So. Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Good. That I was able to actually come in and get some footage of the locker room. And kind of what was going on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was fun. Everybody's like, who's this guy? Yeah. And I'm like, don't worry. No, that's not what you said. <laughs> no, your answer, you had like this stock answer and you were kind of like, he's, he's my film guy. He's my, he's my he's, videographer. It's he he just it's follows me around in my daily life. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't quite sure how to introduce it. And because yeah. I don't even know how we'll use the footage. I know. But I, know. I, I mean, know. maybe you all see, will see it at some point. It might it might find the the light of day. I think it should. Okay. Okay. Well, let's let's should we jump into Guitar Geek trivia now? Please. All right, let's do it. Uh, in and this is your Guitar Geek trivia question. Uh, in what year was the organization NAM National Association of Music Merchants born? Was it A 1889, B 1901, C 1935, or D 1973? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I will be sure to give you the answer. 
Now, I do want to move on. We've got to, uh, well, we have nothing in the mailbag today. Well, I guess a guitar came in, so that's kind of a cool thing. But before we go into what I'm listening to this week, I do want to let you know that Acoustic Tuesday is brought to you by Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Tony's Acoustic Challenge is an acoustic guitar program like you've never seen before. In fact, I want you, as a guitar geek, to learn more about it. So please visit tonysacousticchallenge.com and see how it can take your playing to the next level. You'll experience fun and progress day in and day out. And I feel like, you know, if you're watching Acoustic Tuesday, you'd totally dig it, uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge. So please check that out. Again, tonysacousticchallenge.com, and please don't hesitate to request your invite today. I'd love to have you in the program. All right, moving on to who I'm listening to this week. This week, uh, Acoustic Tuesday viewer Chirag D from, I believe, San Francisco, uh, San Diego, sorry, San Diego, California, uh, recommended that we listen to Will McNichol. I had never heard of Will McNichol before, and I saw Chirag's recommendation, and I was like, wow. How have I not heard of Will McNichol before? And he is a pretty fascinating individual. And this is what Chirag had to say about Will. Will McNichol is just the perfect acoustic fingerstyle virtuoso. His attack, articulation, and accuracy is astounding. His melodies are soothing and yet technically complex as he intensively uses staccatos and syncopation. He has roughly six albums out and I highly recommend his Dragonflies, Frogs, and Bumblebees album. As a perfect companion to this beautiful spring we have coming. I love the positivity in this recommendation. It's just all in there. Uh, he says, by the way, as a plus, he also does many sample videos for high-end bespoke acoustic guitars of the North, uh, for the North American guitar in London, UK, which Michael Watts also does uh, reviews for as well. So just so you all can get a taste or a, a sonic piece of the pie, uh, let's listen to some Will McNichol. Here is his song, Red Dog Running. <laughs> So I think you can see what Chirag was talking about when you said uh, when he said uh, complex and intricate melodies. I, I think one of the things that fascinates me about Will's playing is his, is his right hand. And yes, his melodies are awesome. I think he, I actually referred to him as a melodic wizard as I was just listening to a couple of his songs prior to filming today. But uh, I also want to mention it's it's the things that he does with his right hand, both percussively and. Um, he introduces these grace notes and these these beautiful nuances in between notes that I, I I don't think anyone else but Will can replicate. I think he's one of those guitarists that has a signature sound, a signature tone, and uh, his accuracy and intricacy is is beyond comprehension. So it's just a treat to listen to Will. Now, Will is a bit of a shapeshifter because he plays in a bunch of different settings. Now, that was him playing solo. But he also plays with a percussionist. That's another thing. We'll get to that in a second. But he all, and, and he also plays with a string quartet. In fact, they're called the Innotet. So I pulled a musical selection so you can get a taste of that as well. And this is the song, A Thousand Paper Cranes. And uh, this is Will McNichol and the Innotet. <laughs> commenting about how cool it is to hear, Will, to hear Will's playing, not only by itself, but with the string quartet. And Noah's, like, Noah's response to that was, oh, I love cello. <laughs> well, you brought it up first. I, <laughs> it's just, it, when, when you listen to that song, you hear Will start out, and then all of a sudden, the, the quartet starts to come in, and it's almost like, it just it's just like somebody breathes life into this whole piece it's it's beautiful and uh, uh, 
a treat to listen to. I, I just am really excited about that particular piece of music. Um, so to listen to a couple more of Will's tunes, uh, you gotta check out some albums. So I've selected four for you to, to uh, look at. And the first one uh, was released in 2018, and that is Will McNichol with Inatet, which is what you just listened to. Uh, and then also the one that Chirag recommended to, released in 2018, Dragon, Dragonflies, Frogs, and Bumblebees. And that is a stellar album. Uh, and that song in particular off that album is really good. Uh, next, in 2010, we've got the album Snapshots. And then in 2015, this is what I was talking about when he's a little bit of a shapeshifter. So he released the album Hitchhiker with Luke Selby and Luke is a percussionist of sorts and it's just a it sheds a completely different perspective on Will's tunes in fact it frees Will up from the percussion element of his playing so he can focus on the melodic element and it's just a, a really wonderful it's a really wonderful duo so please check out that Hitchhiker album as well uh, Will is based in the UK and according to his tour schedule I didn't see that he's coming to the States anytime soon so you folks over in the UK Please go visit Will at one of his shows. Tell him you heard him on Acoustic Tuesday, and uh, make sure to check out him. Make sure to check out him. Make sure to check him out. Um, buy his albums, and of course, to learn more about Will, just visit uh, the show notes. Go to acousticlife.tv forward slash at88. Oh, you'll be able to learn more about Will, and of course, see some performances as well. Noah, I'm going to work on the order in which I speak mm -hmm. while you go ahead and uh, relay some small wins from our very own Acoustic Tuesday family. All right. All right. Small wins from Acoustic Tuesday, Tuesday viewers. <laughs> Just like yourself, man. T together, Noah. Together, we can we can teach each other how to speak. It'll be great. <laughs> so great. Let's share some small wins. Uh, okay, so the first one comes from Shane B. Small win. I added a Martin DSS-17 in black smoke today. It's a brand new addition to the 17 series for 2019. If you are into that Great Depression vibe, you need to check this model out. That's awesome. Congratulations. New guitar day. Nice work, Shane. Uh, next small win comes from Mustang 66. I almost thought you were going to say Mustang Sally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, small win, uh, playing House of the Rising Sun with a full F bar chord. Nice. Finally. <laughs> Instead of the F major 7 three finger version. Nice work. Yeah, we can all relate uh, Still. to that. Um, okay, and John N., his small win, discovering the Brother Brothers. Mm. Uh, you guys have introduced me to some amazing artists and some wonderful music. A big thank you. Best show on the internet. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, John. John. John N. from Low Stopped, England. Very cool. And Thanks, then he man. adds as a side, uh, as regarding purposely making a mistake, my whole playing is a series of mistakes. I'm the only one that doesn't notice them. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> that that lesson seemed to get some good chatter going. It was pretty cool to, yeah. to see some of the comments in there. Yeah, it did. It was, it was a good one. And anyway, so yes, that's small wins for today, Tony. Oh, cool. I, I was like, I was I was gonna ask you if that was it, but I was like, maybe he's got more. I I never know, so I just I I'm gonna just you know. Well, see, in my mind, I already thought that maybe I said I was done. Yeah. But I didn't. Okay. But I thought I. So did. you're definitely done. I'm definitely done. <laughs> I'm definitely done. <laughs> well, we would love to hear your small win, so please, in the comments below, if you have one to share, put hashtag small win, and then go ahead and describe it. It could be a concert you went to, changing strings, playing a full F bar chord, getting a new guitar, and just finding some really rad music. We want to know about it, so please put those in the comments below. Again, just make sure it starts off with a hashtag small win. That's let, that lets us know that you are in a celebratory mood and that we should celebrate it on the show. Uh, moving on down the line, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because it's kind of like, you know, if you can kind of picture your guitar journey as, as a series of peaks and valleys. And whenever I find myself in a valley, this is a mental shift that I have to make. I often find myself making the same mistake and saying things like, I feel like I'm behind or I feel like I'm not as good as fill in the blank awesome guitarist that I want to be or play just like. And I want to talk about that notion, feeling behind. 
Um, and I wanted to hit that head on and encourage you to ask yourself three questions when you find yourself feeling like that. When you find yourself feeling like, gosh, I'm, I'm behind, I'm not good, I'm, I'm just, I don't, I don't feel like I'm progressing at all. These are feelings that we all deal with as guitar geeks. So I wanna encourage you to run through the following, well, we'll call it a mental checklist, but it really involves a series of questions. The first question is this. I want you to ask yourself, what's the rush? How are you late? Where are you going? Okay, we call it a guitar journey for a reason. It's not a final destination where you reach this magical place where all of a sudden all things guitar just, just fall under your fingers. That place doesn't exist as much as we'd probably like for it to exist, it's not reality. So we need to really focus on enjoying each and every moment we get with our guitar instead of being like, oh, I'm behind. It's just, a, it's a journey. There's no, there's no behind, there's no being ahead, there's no good, there's no bad. You're constantly learning and constantly progressing. So make sure to get, to get that perspective because I think it helps kind of mitigate that feeling of, gosh, I'm, I'm behind. The next question I want you to ask yourself is, am I looking at the wrong things? Am I comparing myself to other guitar players? Because I think it's this comparison mindset that really can get us into trouble. And I say this because, uh, and I actually brought this up during a, it was a Tony's Acoustic Challenge uh, live member hangout. We do like a monthly uh, live member hangout. And it was, I was just on the heels of a YouTube binge. I was watching a bunch of Trey Hensley stuff. And I thought to myself, wow, he is really good. And then I thought, wow, how long has he been playing? Oh, well, he's, he's a lot younger than I am. Uh, so I'm, I'm clearly not as good as, and I need to be better. And it was this kind of negative thought process that ensued. And I wanna encourage you, and I'm saying this out loud to encourage myself as well, but I, I wanna encourage you to be inspired by other guitar players, but don't compare your unique guitar journey to somebody else's because we're all in different spots. And that's really a beautiful thing. And you should really kind of claim your uniqueness, your unique journey through this whole guitar geek kind of uh, um, world that we live in. And instead of comparing to other guitar players saying, I'm not as good as, you can say, I'm really inspired by so-and-so, and then go on about your own guitar journey with that inspiration. It's a much more positive way to address that feeling of I'm not good or I'm falling behind. The final question I want you to ask yourself is this, do you need a perspective shift? And I say this because so often, and I'll say this from personal experience again, I'll get hung up looking at the past, the times that I should have practiced, the times that maybe I didn't play as, as well as I wanted to, the times that maybe I just, you know, for one reason or another, I didn't get to even practice that day. Instead of focusing on the past, the things that we can't even change, whether unless we have magical powers of sorts, I want you to focus on what you get to do in the future and what you can do at the present because we can't change anything. If, you know, if, if Johnny was sick and he threw up on his desk at school and you had to go pick him up and you didn't get a chance to play guitar that day, you can't go back and change that. Well, maybe, you know, you could have kept Johnny home, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> but we can't, we can't go back and change those events. So rather than dwell on those, we need to look forward and say, cool, well, you know what? I've got a free week this week. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in 10 minutes a day for, for this next week. Or, you know, right now I've got some free time. I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of my guitar right now. Because I think that perspective shifts, that perspective shift allows you to maintain a positive attitude throughout your guitar journey. And I say this, and the reason it's near and dear to my heart is because I fell into a very negative realm in my guitar journey where I was beating myself up for not practicing, I was beating myself up for not being quote unquote good enough, whatever that means. And what it does is it turns the guitar into a chore and it turns the guitar into this guilt producing tool instead of it being a fulfilling tool, a, 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 an instrument that we should enjoy and, and be happy around. So just in a quick summary, when you feel like you're behind or you feel like you're not playing quote unquote good enough, I want you to ask yourself the following things. What's the rush? Where are you headed? Because we're supposed to enjoy our guitar journey every day. It's not this magical destination where once you reach it, everything's great, okay? It's a guitar journey, enjoy every day. The second question is, are you looking at the wrong things? Try and avoid that comparison mindset. And if you find yourself comparing yourself to other guitar players, it's okay, switch it and, and say that I am inspired by so-and-so. 
and keep the fact that you have your own unique guitar journey to enjoy in front of you. And then the last question is, do you need a perspective shift? Instead of focusing on the past, focus on the future and what you can do right now because the past has happened already. You can't change it at all. So this, again, I, I mentioned that it's near and dear to my heart because I think, I think falling into a guitar rut has a lot to do with our mental attitude. And I think these three questions really help you enjoy the guitar journey and really help the guitar become a joyful instrument, something that you can feel fulfilled when you play, something that brings a smile to your face instead of like a guilty reminder that sits in the corner. So again, ask yourself those questions and let's see if we can uh, all together as guitar geeks unite and uh, keep going forward in a nice positive direction. Uh, and of course, at this point, I would love for you to leave a comment on the show. Let us know what you think of the show so far. Let us know what you think about that positive mental attitude. And while you're leaving that comment, if you find yourself missing something in your life, it's probably because you're not subscribed to the Acoustic Life YouTube channel. And that's super easy. Just click that red subscribe button and then don't forget to hit that little gray bell that will give you that will give you a notification each and every time a new video gets released so you don't get so you don't miss out on any of the guitar geeky goodness. And speaking of comments, Noah, I would love for you to share some of the comments from our Acoustic Tuesday viewers. I'm at this point I'm almost afraid to keep speaking. <laughs> now, I'm I was impressed you you talk everything you just talked about yeah i think you did a great job thank you and uh i'm gonna try to be as good as you <laughs> i really i really appreciate that okay so i do have some comments for you excellent uh first one comes from kyle b and he says funny enough my wife and I went away last weekend for our anniversary to this place on the california central coast when i walked into the inn to check us in for the night Guess who was standing at reception? The the reception person? Don't guess. They're so... It, don't <laughs> guess. I'll just tell you. None other than David Crosby. Oh! I was too starstruck to say anything. That I, is so rad. I think you can relate. I was just going to say, I, I you know, as, as a guitar geek, when one of your heroes is standing in front of you... Yeah. You know, you think, you think like when you're at home in the safety of your guitar den, you're like, man, if I, if I ever see Molly Tuttle, I'm going to ask her about her guitar. I'm going to ask her about her tone, like what she likes to play, what kind of exercises, you know, she does for her playing. And then once you're actually in the reality of that situation, mm -hmm. man, the tables turn real quick. I cannot imagine being close to David Crosby because there would be so many things that I'd want to ask him. And I'm mm -hmm. sure no, no words would come out of my mouth. Well, if you not really saying anything in front of Molly is any indicator. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah. Uh, okay, next comment comes from Jonathan David. And he says, <laughs> I thought this was kind of funny. He says, I didn't even know this series existed. <laughs> right, speaking of Acoustic Tuesday. Until the clickbait title showed up in my feed. Gave it a shot. Turns out this is a great show. I'm also a new subscriber. <laughs> also, you convinced me about two years ago to get a J45 and KM184 to record it. Best oh. gear purchases I've ever made. All the best, guys. Oh, man, thanks for subscribing and watching. Appreciate it. Yeah, and I appreciate the honesty. I will say, titling is something that is heavily discussed and debated <laughs> between us. And we really strive not to do that. Yeah. So that it's true. what you see in the title, you get in the show. It's true. Right? It's true. Okay. We want to deliver on our title. Exactly. Exactly. But I appreciate the honesty. Um, okay. And last comment for today, Tony, comes from Terry H., who says, You guys are great and make me laugh when you banter back and forth. Very witty. I love the channel. And this from a 60 ish guitar player. Uh, been playing since I was nine years old. Uh, oh, my cool. inspiration to start playing was the Monkees TV show. Oh, that's awesome. And he's from Ohio. Oh, cool. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's a great comment. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny, too. It's like he, he felt like he had to add the, uh, you do make me laugh. Um, and this from a 60-ish guitar player. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's funny to... It, that you know that that comment makes me think. I would love to know you know of all the guitar geeks watching today, 
I would love for you to, in the comments, just real quickly, put your guitar inspiration. Like, wh what got you into the guitar? What was what was the band or the musical moment that you were like, I the acoustic guitar is for me, for sure. So please, let us know in the comments below. I think that'd be really cool to, to find out because I know for me, uh, man, this is a wild journey. But um, it started with Slipknot, uh, metal band, and then Cannibal Corpse and some other death metal bands. Uh, and then the acoustic guitar. It's just, just this weird, I was into metal, and then it's like a light switch flipped, and all of a sudden I was listening to Earl Scruggs, and I heard Lester Flat on guitar, and then it was all over, and I was in the acoustic world. Okay. So there you have it. Yeah, him speaking of the monkeys made me think about, like, man, what was influencing me to be, have an interest in music? And you know what? I have to say, like, MTV in the 80s. Really? Yeah. Huge, really? Huge influence. Interesting. Yeah. Because I always thought those early music videos were kind of like, they were a little bit out there. Not a lot of, like, playing footage. I thought they were, well, I thought they were awesome. Well, at least at a point in time, MTV, music television, actually did play music. Yes. On, on their program. Correct. Because uh, now... I don't think they do any music. There's like MTV and MTV2, and then there's like the Spanish MTV. And, and MTVX. And who knows anymore? Well, Whitney watches this thing called The Challenge. Okay. It's like a reality fitness challenge show. On MTV? Yeah, it's like a reality show. And I'm like, wait, what are you, what are you watching that on? She's like, MTV. And I was like, oh, wow. I remember Kurt Loder delivering yeah. the news breaks. Tabitha Soren. Yeah, I kind of had a crush on Tabitha Adam, Soren. Adam Curry. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> You'd win a Moon Man. There was like MTV Music Awards. Oh, yeah, they had those little commercials, you yeah. know? Yeah. To like little buffers of, yeah, of, the, of MTV. Yeah. It, it was, was just a great program. And then I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened either. <sighs> anyway, Tony. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for comments, but I do got two You Know Your Guitar Geeks when today. Excelente. First one comes from... <laughs> was that because of the Spanish MTV reference? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, first one comes from Brett B. You Know Your Guitar Geek when... You don't search in between your couch's cushions for change, but that's where you look for your guitar picks when you can't find any. That's a real deal. It's okay. a real deal problem. The struggle uh, is real. Yeah. And the next one comes from Robert I. You know your guitar geek when? Uh, you cherish a particular brand of guitar that you already own and then feel like jumping out of your seat, sort of like that guy in the intro to Acoustic Tuesday when Tony mentions that he may be soon, soon be purchasing one. <laughs> Happy shopping, Tony. Did I read that right? Did that come across? I, I think so. So you cherish a particular blend, brand of guitar that you already own, but he felt like jumping out of his seat and cheering you on when you oh, said you were going to buy gotcha. your guitar. I got gotcha. you. He must be tough because I called out, we're going to Vegas for Whitney's birthday in yes. September. Uh -huh. And I, I mentioned this, I think, on, on, on the last episode or a couple episodes ago. And uh, Heartbreaker Guitars is in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I was, I'm heavily interested in loud and guitars at the present moment. So... That's on my shopping list. And yes. Whitney has already okayed. She's already given me the green light to go shopping. I don't know what I don't know if she knows what that means, but I know what that means. <laughs> Why does this feel like she's given you more green lights since then? She has. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> there's you know you know you're a guitar geek when, Tony. Well, thank and, you and for sharing those. I'm trying Noah. to enunciate and purposefully articulate and form my words today well i think you did a fantastic job thank you i really do i really do thanks i uh you know you're referring to the green lights that whitney has given me i think at this point i think i've just worn her down <laughs> to where she just there's no fight left in her there's she's just like whatever do whatever can i just take a moment and throw in that uh i'm just saying this and i think guitar geeks would back me up that um you should let her get a dog that she can run with you know you know okay. what? Do you know what she wanted to get? We went to this benefit for the uh, the hockey rink, and uh, they're trying to to finish up this year round rink so we can have ice year round. Anyways, so we're at this benefit, and they do a silent auction, you know, and they have all these cool prizes from local businesses and whatnot, and you can you can bid on them. And uh, one of them was a pig, 
Uh, like a, a physical, like a real pig, like a live, a heart beating, like live like walking around. Like a potbelly pig? I, it was, it started with a K. It's a kind of a pet, not like a farm pig, not like, not like bacon with legs, but like an actual <laughs> pig. That's like dog friendly, apparently. Okay. I, this is a thing. Anyways, uh, she was really kind of mad because I was like, no, we're not bidding on a pig. She's like, we could get it for like $95. And I'm like, Whitney, I, we cannot get a pig. It's hard enough to leave and go anywhere with two dogs. And we got two dogs and a pig? Plus, what the hell do you do with a pig during the winter? Do you have to get like a pig sweater? I don't know. That's 135 pound pig. And she's like, she's bummed that we didn't get it. And I'm like, I, I, we're, what is, just because we live in silos doesn't mean we need to have a farm yet. That's a good connection yeah. there. So, well, but but I do have to give her a green light on something soon. Otherwise, I think my green light points are going to go away. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Didn't all right. Well, yeah. well, clearly, we have a bunch of fun on Acoustic Tuesday, and we love being surrounded by guitar geeks. So I want to encourage you to please share this show with your guitar geek friends. Every Tuesday, we get together, and we wave our guitar geek flags, and it's just super fun. So please share the show with your guitar geek friends. Uh, go ahead and send them a link, a YouTube link. Go ahead and send them to AcousticLife.tv, and uh, they can discover all the goodness that awaits for them that awaits them there. Uh, moving on, in fact, speaking of guitar geeks, I've got three guitar snows today. One of them is kind of a follow-up because I had, uh, I had a hunch about something. And uh, Brian L. resubmitted his guitar snow. And he said, I already submitted my guitar snow. It's featured on Acoustic Tuesday, episode 79, but I wanted to follow up. Tony guessed correctly that my lab Crosby is named after Sidney Crosby as well as our cat Seguin and late lab Lemieux. That's, that's hard to say, by the way, late lab Lemieux. Hockey is my second passion. Love your show and you and Noah compliment one another. Thanks, Brian L. Uh, well, we appreciate the follow-up, Brian, and I love to see that your passions involve hockey and guitar. I feel like we would get along swimmingly. Uh, moving along to uh, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. That's where this guitar signal comes from. And I love the family, uh, I, first of all, this is an impressive guitar signal because it's just a wall of guitars. I actually feel like he might have staged this at a guitar shop. But um, anyways, Clay says, hey guys, you know you're a guitar geek when you can recall your guitar's model numbers and given names faster than the names of your children or grandchildren. <laughs> so let's dive into the guitar signal. Now I'm gonna say the year of the guitar, the guitar model, and then the guitar's name. Okay, so you just so you understand what what's happening here. Uh, oh, is this start... the one you need to prep them on because the names are like Polynesian? Or... Yeah, I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do my best with the names. Okay. I, I I don't. The way I'm talking right now, this could be interesting. So stay tuned if you want some good. Don't ask me to say them. No. <laughs> Start, left to right, starting at the top, a 2012 Takamine EF508KC named Wahain with a solid coat top and back and sides. A 2008 Takamine TNV460SC named Karina. Uh, solid bear claw spruce top, solid East Indian rosewood back and sides. 2009 Taylor 416 CE Spring Limited named Sheila. A solid Sitka spruce top and Tasmanian blackwood back and sides. A 2014 Epiphone Limited <laughs> limited edition ES335 Pro named Red, a 2008 Taylor GS5 named Cindy Lou. Isn't that from uh, Cindy Lou Who from the yeah. Grinch, right? Yeah, yeah. good call. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's because of Whitney. Um, sorry, a 2008 Taylor GS5 named Cindy Lou, a 1999 Gibson CL35 Deluxe named Molly. This one's cool. A solid Sitka Spruce top, solid Babinga back and sides. Next, a 2008 Stevens Dreadnought. Check this out. I hand built this with luthier Steve Brown in Durham, North Carolina with a pre-war Martin D18 bracing pattern. This guitar is named Janie, not I didn't do it, uh, Clay did this. Uh, solid Carpathian spruce top and babinga back and sides. A 2014 Rich Tone uh, built by Richard Shulman. Custom build number 109 modeled after Gibson Kalamazoo KG11. This one, th this name tops, tops the book for me. Uh, Fat Bottom Lady is the name of this one. Solid Sitka spruce top, East Indian rose with back and sides. Next a 1985 Guild F212 XL 12 string, fittingly named Big Mama, a solid Sitka spruce top, mahogany back and sides. Next, a 2015 Taylor GS Mini Limited Rosewood named Little Rosie. 
Beside me is my granddaughter, Miss Ellie, holding an Asheville F-Style mandolin. In front of us is my newest addition, a 1965 Gibson LGO named Loretta. Solid mahogany top, back and sides. I wanna thank Clay for sending that in. I love seeing you and your granddaughter surrounded by instruments. So very cool, thank you for sharing that. Next, we're gonna head over to Hanover, PA to look at Wayne B's guitar snow. And starting on the left, we've got a Maker's Mark 46 bourbon. Next, a Buffalo Trace bourbon. Uh, followed by that, a Secrets Distilling Company bourbon from Ocean City, Maryland. And then last, but certainly not least, a bullet bourbon, a bottle of Bullet Bourbon. And we can't forget the LaCroix water uh, mango flavored, of course. So I wanna thank Wayne for sharing his guitar snow with us. Um, just kidding. Wayne does have a guitar snow, but I love the bourbon and LaCroix infusion there. So let's dig into Wayne's guitar arsenal. Uh, left to right, a Takamini G Series, a Martin Performing Artists Series, GPC PA1, PRS Angelus SE, a Martin Koa Concert Size Ukulele, a Voyage Air Full Size Folding Guitar, a Martin DC 16 RGTE, a Takamini Black G Series, Taylor GS Mini, Alvarez Classical Nylon String Guitar, Breedlove 12 String Guitar, on the couch, a Gibson Les Paul Special, a Breedlove 6 String, a Martin Triple O X Series, an Antique Zither, African Maybe Ugandan, a Dungu Bow Harp, on the floor, a Jimmy Buffett Little Martin, Martin, an Ovation Celebrity Deluxe, a Fender 72 Thin Line Telecaster reissue, and an Epiphone John Lennon EJ-160E. And I do want to mention, there's a couple little um, Easter eggs. Well, one main one here, and that is on top of his amp, there is just an array of pop figures, those big-headed little plastic figures. And I think I saw Slash, Alice Cooper, I wanna say I saw a Prince one on there, but all the music heroes are on there. So I thought that was pretty cool. So thank you uh, for sharing that, Wayne, and leaving a little Easter egg for us to find. Thank you to everybody who shared their guitar arsenal. And of course, if you want your guitar arsenal featured on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday, it's super easy. Get yourself a guitar arsenal shirt. There's a link right beneath this episode. And then go ahead and put that guitar arsenal shirt on and take a picture amongst your guitars, as you have already seen. And then last but certainly not least, please submit it at AcousticLife.tv. Once you go there, there's gonna be a submit link in the top menu. You. Go ahead and click that, submit your picture, and then uh, it'll give you an uh, opportunity to describe your guitar arsenal. And of course, once you submit it, you'll be featured on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. You'll join the ranks of guitar geeks by sharing your collection. And it's so cool. I love seeing the other collections and the names and how everybody like situates their guitars. You know, I think mm -hmm. I'd be more of like a line them up on the couch kind of a guy okay. instead of like, like the, the, like, kind of guitar store wall hanging thing, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, I should experiment with that. I've never named one of my instruments. I've thought about it, but I just, I, I can't commit. I have a hard enough time naming like a dog. Can you imagine me trying to name a pig? Sure, <sighs> well Whitney would have named the pig. Yeah, probably. Um, and I've named all my kids, so. <laughs> <laughs> I almost lost my coffee there. <laughs> so you you've got practice. Yeah, it's not that hard, right? Just pick a name. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I, moving on. I've got one more item for you today, and this one can severely impact the way in which you change strings on your guitar. Severely sounds like a harsh word, and I actually uh, it will benefit you. Let's just say that. So I mentioned that this came in the mail uh, a couple of days ago, actually a couple of weeks ago now, uh, and this it was from Dave Summerfield, and he sent to us the personal gig a portable guitar workshop. Now, this thing is amazing, and before I even show you it, I want you to see this video because he does such a great job describing it. I think this is gonna blow your socks off your feet. So let's have a look at the gig personal, uh, rather the gig portable guitar workshop built by Dave Summerfield. Hi, I'm Dave Summerfield, inventor of the gig portable guitar workshop. Whether you play acoustic guitar, electric guitar, ukulele, or almost any other stringed instrument, you inevitably have had the challenge of working on your instrument and not having the proper place to do so. Now there is a solution. Introducing the Gig, the world's first portable guitar workshop. The Gig comes fully assembled and can be strapped to your guitar case in minutes. The non-reactive, soft rubber touch points gently grip your guitar while holding it firmly in place so you could restring, polish, or repair your guitar. The adjustable tower clamp can even allow for your guitar 
or stringed instrument to be securely held on its side while you work on it. When you are done, the gig packs away neatly and conveniently until the next time you need it. Not going on the road anytime soon? You can simply screw the gig to your workspace where it will always be available for immediate access. Or it can be used freestanding on a flat, even surface for gentler operations. The gig is a must-have for any guitar enthusiast and makes the perfect gift. To learn more, go to davesummerfield.com. Thank you. I just have to say this. Every guitar geek needs one of these. Okay, this came in the mail, and I, th I opened it up, and I thought, this is pretty cool. I could, I could use this. I brought it home this weekend, and I started using it on the kitchen table. Now, let me just paint a picture of what life looked like prior to, change, prior to this thing entering my life, uh, because I basically would lay a blanket on the kitchen table, lay my guitar on the blanket, and go ahead and change my strings. And the guitar is slip sliding around. It's not like I couldn't do it, uh, uh, but it just, it always felt weird. I always felt like I was just hacking together kind of this temporary guitar table. And of course, Whitney would roll her eyes because that's of course where we eat our meals. Um, anyways, that's a whole nother story. Um, <laughs> but when the portable guitar workshop entered my life just a couple weeks ago, I brought it home because I was like, I gotta put this thing through its paces so I can say what I like about it. And maybe anything that I don't like, but I can tell you it's all in the like column. Um, I didn't use the straps on the guitar case, but I could definitely see if I was on tour, on the road and wanting to change my strings, rather than placing my guitar on top of the case without any support, strapping this to the case would be a huge benefit because it would just, it would take all those accidents away. Uh, so I just use it on my kitchen table like this, uh, put the neck support up here and then the two body supports down underneath. And then of course the uh, little th kind of a, um, fabric protector uh, beneath the guitar there just so it didn't rub on the table. Um, and I gotta tell you, it was just, it was a dream because these things are pretty, they're, they're pretty sticky. They don't move. Uh, so without the straps, it's fantastic. But as you saw in the video, you can screw it to a bench. You can strap it on your guitar case. It comes with a little pouch so you can put everything away. And uh, it's extremely convenient and it just felt solid, safe, and stable. I, I, um, I'm, I, I just wanna say thanks to Dave for sending this out for me to demo. And uh, I'm just happy there are people like Dave in the world to take care of us guitar geeks because I've seen many different string changing uh, locations from a bed to a pillow on a table to the floor to on top of a guitar case, in my case, the kitchen table. And this really solves the problem of being able to change your strings and work on your guitar anywhere and make sure that it's solid and that it won't fall or get hurt or anything like that. Uh, so you can learn more about this. Go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT88. You can get a link to Dave's site where you can look at, there's different color options. There's a red, a blue, a black. Uh, it goes for around 110-ish dollars after you factor in the shipping. And I think it's, it, I think it's built fantastically well. And I think uh, that is just a small price to pay for just knowing that your guitar is gonna be secure and that you can avoid those untimely accidents that do happen when you're just trying to balance the guitar and change strings on the fly. So again, make sure to check that out. Uh, Dave Summerfield is a genius in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, check it out, acousticlife.tv forward slash AT88. And uh, wow, holy smokes, Noah, we've just burned through the list. I think as we've started going today, our linguistic skills have grown. I, I hope so. Yeah, I think we're doing great. Well, let me just, let me go ahead and uh, recap our Guitar Geek trivia and deliver the answer to these fine folks. All right. All right, your question was this. In what year was the organization NAM, National Association of Music Merchants, born? Was it 1889, 1901, 1935, or 1973? Well, if you said to yourself, you know the answer is B, 1901, you're absolutely correct. Check out this story. 52 members of the National Piano Manufacturers Association of America formed the National Association of Piano Dealers of America. Don't worry, the NAM connection comes in soon. In 1902, the first annual convention and trade show was held in the YMCA Hall in Baltimore, Maryland. Membership dues were set at $5 per store. In 1919, 18 years after the organization's inception, NAPTA was renamed to the National Association of Music Merchants, NAM, which we all know and love today. Even early NAM shows were fairly star-studded. 
1915 at a trade show in San Francisco, none other than Charlie Chaplin demonstrated piano sales. And around 1918, 1919, Thomas Edison exhibited in at least one of the organization's events. Pretty cool. And I, I just think it's it's funny to, to hear that story and then look at the NAM show right now in its current state because it is still star studded, but things have changed pretty drastically. It's grown from uh, uh, 52 people to an entire industry, like thousands upon thousands of people. Pretty awesome stuff. Uh, so with that, Noah, yes, we have taken the sheet of paper that is Acoustic Tuesday. We've made all the proper folds and we've set the Acoustic Tuesday paper airplane a sail into the wind mm -hmm. to go as far as it possibly can and hopefully the teacher doesn't turn around to see it. That's good. What do you think of that? That's a that good one. That one just it wow. just popped out. I um, was like I um, was like yeah, I'm pretty excited about I'm that. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm also impressed. Well, let's take a sneak peek into next week to see what you can expect from Acoustic Tuesday. Next week on Acoustic Tuesday, Tone Talk is back and I'm excited because it's going to be a dandy. I review a new set of earplugs and you're gonna learn about a blues legend that you absolutely have to see in concert if you can, just because, well, he's downright amazing. And you'll learn about him next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday at 10 a.m. here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv, where you can find all sorts of guitar geeky goodies to make it through the week until, well, next Tuesday, when you can catch Acoustic Tuesday, because it happens every Tuesday at 10 a.m. on YouTube. Mountain time. I was trying to say Tuesday as many times as I possibly could. It's a great day of the week. I mean, come on. I, I agree. So with that, we've ended Acoustic Tuesday. Yes. And we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. We thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a guitar geek and spreading the guitar geek goodness. And speaking of guitar geeks, remember, Guitar Geeks Unite. Have an awesome week, and we'll see you next Tuesday.